All right, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on the March 12th, 2020 Ask Tom on Database Security. My name is Richard Evans. I'm an outbound product manager of Oracle Database Security. I'm joined here by my colleague and the product manager of Database Vault, uh, Mr. Alan Williams. Just to kick it off, here's a reminder of our safe harbor statement, right? Any new products or new features we talk about, um, don't buy them based on that. Buy them what, uh, buy the products based on what exists today. And just a reminder, we are recording this call and it will be available at asktom.oracle.com a few days after. And if you've not been here with us before, thanks for joining. <clears throat> Ask Tom is a direct channel into Oracle Database Security product development. This is a free and open forum for you to ask questions you can't get answered elsewhere. So each session, we're gonna talk about some relevant product announcements. We're gonna have a technical presentation. Uh, today it's on Database Vault. And then we'll have a question and answer period at the end of the chat. And at any point, feel free to put your questions into the Q&A section in Zoom. And uh, Alan or I will try to answer those as we go. If we can't, then we'll try to answer them at the end. And Ask Tom is held twice a day on the second Thursday of every month. Um, these are identical sessions. Uh, the questions might vary, but we do this so we can reach both sides of the world. All right, some product announcements. So Oracle's very excited to announce that the autonomous database serverless now supports Database Vault. And so you can go into Database Vault, you can enable it, you can disable it within your autonomous databases. And Autonomous Database also supports private IP addresses for serverless. So when you have a new Autonomous Database provisions, you have the choice of choosing between the public or private IP addresses. Oracle DataSafe now provides, now can use that capability of that private endpoint capability to enable DataSafe to connect to private IP addresses. So if you're using XCS, DBCS on VM or DBCS on bare metal, then you can connect to Oracle DataSafe, monitor your databases, your cloud databases, look at the security assessment, user assessment, collect audit logs, discover sensitive data, or mask that data. Okay, so that's a, a feature that's been in limited availability for several months. So we're excited about this update with Oracle DataSafe. Oracle Key Vault 18.3 was released. A um, couple minor changes here where we renamed some endpoint group and virtual wallet in the REST API calls. Um, but the really cool thing about Oracle Key Vault 18.3 is that it's available in the OCI marketplace. So if you want to create an Oracle Key Vault environment in OCI, you can go to the cloud marketplace, you can select Key Vault 18.3, and this is still a bring your own license scenario, and then it will provision it in your tenancy for you. A very powerful option for us, we're real excited about that. And then Audit Vault and Database Firewall Bundle Patch 12 for AVDF 12.2 is released. Uh, you can see we've got some updated target support here, SQL Server clusters, IBM DB2 11.1, IBM AIX 7.1, um, some target group AVCLI commands that we can manage, some more security, stability, functionality that we've included. And then the next major release that we're gonna have for Audit Vault and Database Firewall is gonna be called AVDF 20. And we'll have more information on this as that release gets closer. So. All right, so before we dive into the technical conversation, we want to point you to two My Oracle support notes that you should be aware of as you deploy and manage uh, Database Vault. Master note for Database Vault, doc ID 11952051. So that's kind of your index for relevant notes and information. And then if you're working in an EBS environment, then you'll want to look at doc ID 21315. 435.1 to talk about how to integrate EBS 12.1, 12.2 with Database Vault. Okay. 
All right, so let's talk about what our technical session is going to be today. Uh, just to kind of level set, Oracle Database Vault is a licensable option as a part of the Oracle Database Enterprise Edition. It is security controls that can protect application data from unauthorized access and help you comply with the privacy and regulatory requirements that exist today or could exist tomorrow. You can deploy these controls to block privileged account access from application data and to control sensitive operations inside the database using a trusted path authorization. And that's what we're gonna talk about today is this kind of trusted path concept. Database Vault has realms, command rules, factors, and separation of duty features that help reduce the overall security risk that regulation provisions worldwide address, okay? And just kind of give you a little picture of what it looks like here is, this is straight out of the documentation. And uh, what we've got here is we've got a database that has multiple applications in it. We want our application to be able to access the HR data, but not to be able to pro uh, traverse to the procurement data or the financial data. We could set time restrictions on when this application could access the data, where it could access it from. And then if we want, we can separate our DBAs from that HR data. So my environment is a virtual machine on OCI and it's running Oracle 19.3 Enterprise Edition. It's a multi-tenant database, so it's a pluggable database. We're gonna be working in PDB1 and it's on Oracle Linux. I already have Database Vault configured and enabled just to save time. There is a reboot that is required of the database when you enable Database Vaults, whether it's in the container database or the pluggable database. Our application is what we would call an, an end tier or a multi-tier application where that application authenticates to the database with a username and password. And in our case, this is a, a simple little Glassfish application that is very vulnerable. It's uh, built that way in purpose. We have our application users that are authenticated to the application using a username and password and that is stored in a table in the database, and that table is called Demo HR Users, and now I'll show you what that looks like. And we have privileged users that we're gonna be connecting to, and they can query the application data table, the primary one, uh, that table is called Demo HR Employees, and we're gonna be using SQL Plus as well as SQL Developer, okay? How to demonstrate this. All right, and so our use cases today, what we wanna do is, we want to prevent privileged users from querying the application data in any tool, okay? And then we want to limit how the application user can be used from any location other than the application. We want to create what this, this trusted application path concept where we say, nope, you can only use the username and password for our application from the application servers. And the second use case today is, well, we need a break glass mechanism. We need some way to access that data if, if uh, the situation arises. And we're gonna do that by putting a role in there called Emp, uh, Emp Search App, and we're gonna make him part of our realm. But we wanna limit how and where that role can be used, okay? So we don't want it just to be used anywhere, anytime. All right, so let me show you what my environment looks like here. So I've got my Glassfish application here. It's a, a little HR application. Uh, it's been it's written several years ago, but it's been real handy for us. I'm gonna go ahead and log in as HR admin with my password. And up here, I've got some metadata associated with my application. So I'm actually identify, uh, I, uh, authenticated as employee search prod, my schema's employee search prod, my current user's employee search prod. So even though I logged in as HR admin, behind the scenes, it is employee search prod. My database is my PDB1. And then you can kind of just see what my host name is, some general information here about my about my session. I'm pulling, we're pulling all this data out of Sys context. So this is kind of just looking at your Sys context information. If I do some searches here on the data, you can see I've got uh, Cynthia Adams, Paula Adams, all these different users here. 
If I do a debug, you can see what my query looks like here. So you can see I'm doing a join on this table to itself to, so I can get the users and the managers and all this information here. And uh, if I wanna sort this down by, let's say a different number here, like let's pick, a, I've got several in here, but let's pick a different one in 560. Let's go 560 today. We can see that we've got Brian Walter, Brian Walter, we can see his social security number or national identifier or social insurance number. We can see information about his credit card, his salary. So we can see all this and this is all fictitious data. So we're not looking at anyone's real data here, but we can, uh, we can just do some queries here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our our SQL plus environment here. And I just wanna show you what this looks like ahead of time. Oh, let me uh, get this guy restarted. And what I've done is I told you database vault was enabled, was configured and enabled. And I just wanna demonstrate that that's true here by showing you a query where we combine V dollar PDBs with CDB DV status. So we can look at our pluggable databases and then the database vault status. I like this query here because it allows me to see the pluggable database name, not just the container ID. So it's, it's easier to understand where you're at and what you're doing. Here you can see my first query is DBA DB status in the container database. So this guy shows configured, he shows enabled. We're not using ops control in this. We've done a previous talk on Database Vault Ops Control, which is available in 19C, Database Vault 19C. Um, but today we're just kind of talking about the basics and we've configured Database Vault, we've enabled Database Vault in the container. And then if we look at our, our uh, pluggable databases, we can see we've got two pluggable databases, PDB1 and PDB2. And we've got an enabled and configured, configured and enabled in our PDB1, but we're not gonna work on our PDB2 today, so I've not configured or enabled it. So that's one of the neat things about Database Vault is that you can have a mixed environment here of we wanna enable it on this pluggable but not another pluggable. As long as it's configured and enabled in the container database, then you're free to do that. You could, you could uh, it, go later and configure and enable this in PDB2 with a pretty simple configuration and a close and an open of that pluggable database. Okay, so that's what this environment looks like. Um, that query, I'll just kind of show you here. I'm gonna run some queries like this that are gonna use EOF so I can just pass the script to it and then it'll exit automatically. So if I run it, it looks like that. And the same result, right? Because I've already got it configured and enabled. Now I've got SQL Developer. Okay, so I like SQL Developer. It's a really cool tool. And I've preloaded all of my users here so I can connect to them. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, connect to all these guys, open up a SQL workshop, and just kind of demonstrate what, uh, what we are going to see from that application. And we're gonna connect as the application owner here, employee search. We're gonna connect as uh, the Database Vault account manager because we've got separation of duty with Database Vault. We've got an account manager who can do create user, alter user, drop user, can grant connect. And then we've got our Database Vault owner who can apply policies, create realms, create rules, create rule sets, create all the supporting and protecting data around it, but can't access data itself. And I'll go ahead and just connect as him, but we're gonna primarily use him in Enterprise Manager. So, and the last user here, I wanna show you, he doesn't exist yet. We're gonna create him as a part of this process. This rich DBA here, invalid username, invalid password. He doesn't exist in the database yet. We're gonna create him as a part of this process. But what I wanna show you first is, you remember in my UI here, we did a debug on this. We can see that we've got our table in here, demo HR employees. It joins to itself here, demo HR employees. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna query this. 
And we've already established by looking at the support data here that the schema is employee search prod. And we can see here's my data. If we want to narrow this down specifically, we can do user ID equals, uh, what did I pick today? Five, 560, 560. We can see we've got our Walter Bryan user. You can see his phone number. We scroll over here, we can see his location, his date of birth, his social security number, his address, his corporate card, all these information, his salary. And again, remember, this is just fictitious data, so we're not looking at anything real here. But you can see that this is pretty typical of an environment, right? We've got the ability to log in as any of these users, execute this query. We can log in as the user himself. So I'm using SQL Developer and I'm logging in as the app account. But if I log in as Database Vault Account Manager, he doesn't have those privileges to do that. His role is to create users, drop users, manage account-related access. And if I do the same thing as the Database Vault owner, same thing. His role is to manage the access, um, the controls around database vault. So he can create realms, create rules, view audit data, create rule sets, create all this that protects application related data. Okay. So, but what I also want to see today is that I have, I want to see how I connect. How does this application actually work? Right. You know, so I've got this information here. I can kind of see that. But what we also know is that we can look at some of this information from uh, VDollar session and we can see how our users are connecting here. So, so far what we have is we have multiple connections to this employee search prod user. Uh, the operating system user, you can see who it is, you can see the machine, and then you can see what program it's going to use here too, okay? So, for example, like uh, here you can see I'm connected as employee search prod. My local username is RC Evans. My machine name is, you know, named RC Evans laptop. And then my program is SQL developer, okay? Let's throw in um, module here too, so we can see both, and we can just see if there's ever a difference between these things. So let's, uh, let's add one to it. So if I'm in here and I want to do employee search prod and then my super secret password here, and then I don't want the screen to scroll. So I'm going to do a select count from this table instead. A thousand. Yep. Yeah, all right. So now let's go back to our view here. And all right, now we see a new row as well. So we can see SQL plus, we can see how he's connected, we can see where he's connecting from, the operating system user just happens to be the same, and who we're connected as here, okay? So um, my application and my database happen to reside on the same system for this demonstration. Yours wouldn't, right? Your end tier application would reside on a different environment. It would be, you know, uh, app, HR app 01, HR app 02, HR app 03, whatever it would be. So you'd see something different here. But this is important to know as we kind of go forward and we, uh, we see this information. All right, so let's go to, we're going to go to the Enterprise Manager Cloud Control here. And we're going to navigate to my favorites. And I've already got Database Vault bookmarked as a favorite. So I'm in my pluggable database. You can see Database Vault is enabled. You can see we've got uh, no violations or anything here. We're in a new environment. So what we're gonna start with is that first step of protecting the application data from you know, privileged users. So like we saw, we could query any of the, the uh, users. We could query any of the data. So what we wanna do here is we wanna do our of our, our new realm, which a realm is basically like a bucket that we're gonna put all the objects into. And I'm gonna give it a simple name like protect HR data, right? And then what does it do? Oh, it protects HR data from access, from unauthorized or unwanted access. How about that? And I'm gonna make it a mandatory realm. A mandatory realm means that you have to be in my, this realm in order to access the data. 
if I don't check this box, then Database Vault will respect direct object grants. Meaning if you grant a user select on a table that the Database Vault realm is protecting, then Database Vault will say, oh, you've been granted select, I'll go ahead and let you select. With the mandatory realm, by checking this box, Database Vault says, no, no, you may have been given select on that object, but you must be a member of this realm. So when we get to this realm authorization step, that's when the mandatory realm comes in and you must be in that realm authorizations list, okay? Now, what we can do here is we can enable, disable, or we can do a simulation mode, okay? So what we could do is simulation mode, and this is a 12C feature in higher, 12C release two, I believe, is that we could enable this in simulation mode and then not put anyone in here as a realm authorizations or basically just set it to deny everything. And then we could capture where those users are coming from, how they're accessing, all this information. So like if I just did that real quick, let's put him in here in simulation mode. Let's add my object that I want to protect. And what I want to protect is my employee search prod schema and everything in it. I don't care, I could just do tables or views or packages, procedures, but I wanna protect everything. And then if I go done, what you'll see is that it creates the statements for me. So, you know, it's fun to do this in the UI if you're doing one or two, but if you're gonna deploy this to an enterprise environment, then you're gonna to wanna to capture all the DBMS Mac Adam commands and write this yourself so you can script it enabling disabling and how you work on it okay what I want to show you real quick though is that we are in simulation mode and so if I do finish then I'm gonna go and come back to my application here and I'm gonna run some queries I'm gonna do a new search here just so I can see this thing wide open I'm gonna to come to my query here in my SQL developer assist and run it Come over here as system and run my query. Come over here as employee search prod and run my query. So they're all the same queries. I'm just running out on a different environment. Different, uh, I'm gonna run it from here, SQL plus. And now let's come back to enterprise manager and take a look at maybe our, uh, our simulation logs. Okay, so if we come into simulation mode logs, we can see here that we've got these these executions of realm violations or what would be realm violations, right? So we didn't actually block them, but you know, we, uh, we viewed it. And so we can see what would happen if we put this realm in place without allowing anyone to access it. You know, and in case we're curious here, we can use our database owner. We can come in and we can view that same log view from SQL developer and we get more information, we get maybe an easier view here and we can see that information we've kind of already established, right? We've got, we've got uh, users, session users, we've got our machine, we've got our module and how we're connecting. This is all, this all is the same as what we have for um, our query on VDollar session, right? So let me, let me just make this look a little nicer here. Order by one, two, three. And so we can see employee search, where they're coming from. And if I ran the same query over here like we did before, basically just looking at VDollar session, we can see who's currently connected, where they're connecting from. So we can capture this stuff. So before you get too far into database fault, you can just say, okay, I just wanna see what would happen if I put this realm in place or if I put this command rule in place. And so it's really powerful just to get started with database fault this way because we don't want to stop the application from functioning. We don't want to break anyone. We don't want to cause anyone any more work, but we do know that we need to add some additional controls here. Okay. So we will move out of simulation mo mode, move to enabled. And we're going to prove here that, yeah, we know we need to allow the application owner to access its own data, right? It makes sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here, and as someone who's gonna be a Realm authorized owner, we're gonna put in our employee search prod user here. Okay, so we'll select employee search prod. We'll make him an owner, and you can look at the documentation differences between participant and owner for Realms. 
Um, basically, a, an owner can grant additional privileges, um, but uh, we're not going to get into that today. And again, the cool thing about Enterprise Manager is that you can see what the update statement is. Now, don't rely fully on Enterprise Manager, please, because there are some bugs, there are some hiccups, there are some challenges as you get into some advanced use cases. But as a demonstration to your team or your boss, it's fantastic to show. And then you can see here that we've got the update realm. You can copy this command and then you can work with it and you can kind of tweak it and you can manage it yourself. All right, so let's finish this. We've enabled it. We added someone who should be able to access the data. Let's come back to our application. Let's make sure that we can access our data still. Let's pick a different user here. We can, we can access Jacqueline's information. We can do some queries here. Our whole goal is to not to make the application uh, have an error or not to be able to function there, right? You can see here, we've got all of our sessions connected. Now, if I come back into system and I run my query to see, oops, now I'm getting an insufficient error privilege, right? Before where system could see this data, he can't see this data anymore. If I come into sys and I run the same query, Querying this demo HR employees, he can't see the data either, right? If I come in here as database employee search prod, he can still see the data. And one of the things I forgot to do was I said I was going to show you what the employees or the users table look like with the password and all the stuff in here. So this is our application account, our application users, right? So we logged in as HR admin and he's got a very complex password there, right? So we can still query this as the application owner. Well, but what I want to do is I, I want to protect application data from privileged users, but I also need to stop the capability or the ability of this application account from being misused or abused. Okay. So one of the things I always like to say is I used to be a database administrator and it would drive me crazy when developers or anyone would take these application account passwords and then use them on their workstations. Cause that wasn't the point of them. They're supposed to be using named account. I should be logging in as R Evans uh, uh, DBA or rich DBA here in this case, right? I shouldn't be logging in and just using those application credentials anywhere I want. Okay. So we have done that. We've, we've, we've done the first part where we've kind of separated the privileged users from the data. And just to kind of bring that point home a little bit, what I want to do is I want to create a new user and I'm going to use my application, my database vault account manager user. And I want to create him as rich DBA. I'm going to grant so uh, connect so he can connect and I do this as my account owner. And then what I want to do is I want to come back as sys and I want to grant select any table to this rich DBA user. So let me go ahead and connect as him. Uh, open SQL workshop. And now let's copy this guy here. We'll paste him over here in my rich DBA SQL workshop. He's blocked insufficient privileges. And let's come back in to our enterprise manager and let's just disable this temporarily to show that Rich would be able to access this data. So let's go uh, uh, disabled, we'll go disabled. We could go to simulation mode, but if you needed to, you can see what the update would look like with disabled. And now let's run this query. And again, we're back to being able to access this data by disabling this realm. Sys can access it. System can access it. Our newly created user, Rich DBA, can access this data. All right, so let's go ahead and enable it and just demonstrate again that we have separated that user from the data. And then disabled. All right, so enabled and the user now receives insufficient access, okay? But the thing that's keeping me up at night, the thing that worries me is the fact that this application user and password is stored on all of our application servers and there's lots of people who know it and you know, I need to add some more controls here. So 
we know how the application connects and we're going to utilize that information, right? We know based on our simulation modes, based on what we see in V$ session, we know that employee search uses an OS user of Oracle, uses a long machine name that looks like this and connects using a JDBC thin client. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a rule in database vault that does just that, that allows us to control how we can use database vault. And what we're going to do is we're going to call this rule our application server. Okay. And I've gone ahead and built this over here in a text pad because it's easier than copying and pasting, uh, typing it all manually. And basically what we've got here is we've got a, we're going to check the session context to make sure your employee search prod. So if you meet all of this criteria, then you can use this user. Right, and so we want to control access to this user to make sure that these additional factors here that fall into place. And if you want to see how it's built, you can do your show SQL here. But just be careful because you, you the ticks, the single ticks, and tick tick ticks, and all these things can get get kind of scary. So again, I like showing it in SQL or in Enterprise Manager, but I like doing the work in SQL Plus right or through a script writing a script to do it okay all right so a rule then gets placed into a rule set and a rule set is a combination of rules so we can have one or more in here and we're just going to call this guy trusted application path since that's what we're working today we're going to say allow access to the employee search prod objects from only where we want right and that's based on our rules that we're going to add we're going to make him a static rule set so it only gets evaluated once. We don't need it evaluated every time we execute a query. This just helps with performance. And we could choose any true. If we had two, two rules in here, we may want to say uh, any true, where as long as one of them matches, you're okay. But since we only have one, I'm just going to say all true. We're going to add that rule that we just created here. And what did I call him? I already forgot. We called him application server right at the top. And you can see in there, we've got a bunch of default rules to it that you can use. And then we're gonna to go to the next page. And then what we can do here is one of the cool things is you can put a fail code or an error message. So if you wanted to put something specific in here, so whoever received this error saw a custom error message and it's told them what to do, like call the help desk for access, contact your manager, talk to your DBA, or you could not show an error, right? So you've got some flexibility here as you create this rule to decide what gets shown and what doesn't. And then, you know, whether you wanna create custom event handling, how you wanna audit, we're just gonna audit failure. And so you can do all that. All right, and then again, shows you the SQL here and what it builds and how it builds it. And yeah, a little complicated here with this, but it's a good place to get started. All right, so we've built our rule, we've built our rule set, but what we haven't done yet is implemented that anywhere. So what we wanna do is we wanna attach this <clears throat> to our authorized user. As you remember, we're protecting employee search data. We are allowing employee search prod to access his own data, which sounds strange, but right, it's, it's true. We show that you, if you're not in there, you can't access this data or you know, it can be blocked, but we've also shown that he can still, or someone could still use SQL developer or any tool and use this account if they know the username and password. So what we want to do is we want to change this rule set here from being, Hey, you're in there. You're okay. As long as you, you can log in, you can do whatever you want to using our trusted application path. So we're going to say here, no, 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 no. If you're going to use this user as a, this authorized grantee to access this data that we're protecting with this realm, then you must also meet our rule set requirement to do so. And again, we can see our SQL that's changed. Let's finish up. Now again, we want to demonstrate just that the application capability works just fine. We haven't messed with our application. We haven't caused an outage here. We can see our active users, our inactive users. We can demonstrate here that sys cannot query the data, right? Because we've re-enabled that realm and sys and system are not part of that realm. 
we can see that we are no longer going to be able to use SQL Developer to access this data. So we get that custom error message here. It's a little small, but it says app account usage is disallowed. Try the other table, same error message, right? App account usage is disallowed. We are not allowing it. Let's come over here to SQL Developer where we're logged in as this user. And all I did is run the same query again and we received that same error message. App account usage is disallowed. So we cannot use our employee search user anywhere but the application now, right? We've limited it to that very fine criteria that we established in our rule, right? We took our realm, we modified our realm authorized user, employee search prod, to be even more restricted based on this rule set that we created, trusted application path. Our rule set, trusted application path, consists of one rule. That one rule is application server, and this is the criteria. So if you had multiple application servers, you could put them in here as separate rules, application server one, app server two, app server three, and you would just change maybe the host name of where they're connecting from. You could change that last line in my expression from equals this particular server to in this particular server group or like if you name your servers all the same. Or if you wanted to get more advanced, you could say, okay, well, I'm gonna create a table and I'm gonna put this information in the table and I'm gonna have the rule set go look at that table to see if the user, the OS user, the module and the host are in that table. So there's lots of things you could do here. This is a simple use case to get started with this trusted application path, okay? So we've done that first one, but come back to my slide here for a minute. Uh, where's my slide here? Okay, so we've done prevent privileged users from querying the application data in any tool. Yep, we've done that. Um, limit how the application user is being used from anything other than the application. Yep, we've done that. Allow a break glass method to access the data. And we're gonna use a role called emp search app. Okay, yeah, we can do that. And we're gonna limit how and where that role can be used. So basically, part two of each of these is this trusted application path concept. And I wanna show that we can do that with a role as well, okay? All right, so let's make sure that I have my role created. I think I do create role. We're gonna say uh, create role. Yeah, he exists already, okay? So uh, he exists. Let's drop him. Why not just drop him and start fresh? I'm search app, drop him, recreate him, all right? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, grant him to our DBA rich. So, because we know that DBA rich is gonna need to access this data. So we grant it to DBA rich. And then remember, for grants of roles to take effect, we have to log out and log back in. So let's, uh, let's do this. You can see here he only has connect. Let's disconnect. Let's use SQL developer and reconnect. And here he comes. All right, now we went from connect to connect in emp search app. All right, cool. We've got him, he has that role, but that role right now doesn't mean anything. He still can't access that data. We haven't done anything with that role to allow it to have any special privileges here. So we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna add him to our realm as a uh, authorized participant. We're gonna add the role right now. All right, so our view, or I'm sorry, our realm mandatory, he's enabled. We are protecting the employee search prod schema, all objects, all object types. We have a realm authorized user of the employee search prod. He's narrowed down, his privileges are, his access is controlled, his usage of this data is controlled with trusted app path. We wanna add in a new user here. And by user, I really mean role. So you can see here, we see users and roles in this, in this pop-up box. So we wanna select 
our EMP search access that we just created, EMP search app that we just created. And we just want to make him a participant. A little less privileges, but again, you can look at the documentation and see what the difference is. But uh, for our purposes today, uh, no difference. And you can see here that what SQL Developer, I'm sorry, what Enterprise Manager does is something you could do in SQL Developer. And you just add auth to Realm, and it tells you the Realm name, who the grantee is, and then you know the rule set is null right now. Okay, so let's add them in here. And then let's go back here and run our query. Okay, so now we're seeing data as this user. And again, remember, all we did was give him this additional role and then add that role as a Realm authorized participant in our uh, application, our HR Realm that we're protecting data. And if we come back to our employee search app, he doesn't have that role. So he still gets this error message here that says, no, you cannot use the application account this way. We've disabled that capability. Uh, let's come back in here as sys. And sys doesn't get that either. If you come back in here as system, no, nope, you can't see the data either. And then let's just, we, we just wanna make sure our application is good. So we come into our application. And let's pick another one, 212, how about that? Oh, I don't have a user called that, that's interesting. Oh, maybe he's not active. All right, 212. All right, yeah, so inactive user here, 212. Okay, so our application functions and our role works and everything is, everything is great, right? So I'm logged in as employee search. If I run this query, I get this error. If I log in as Rich DBA, Oracle 123 DBA, and I run my, oops, I don't mean to run that one. I wanna run this one. I can see the data. So you can see here the difference between running it in SQL Plus as the application user disallowed, running it as Rich DBA. I can see that because I granted him the session roles of EMP search app and I made this role a protected or I'm sorry an authorized participant in my realm so the realm really has no the, the, uh, the role has no privileges I would probably maybe assign some privileges to that role but uh, but you you don't need to because rich DBA has select any table privileges okay all right so now the second part of this one here is we want to do the same thing. We want to limit how and where this role can be used. Okay, so I'm connected here in SQL Plus. I'm also connected in SQL Developer right here. But you know what? We, we don't want to be able to use this just about anywhere. So let's take a look at where we're connected and how we're connected and do essentially the same thing that we did when we first created this realm. We might do this in simulation mode, but just today, for the uh, sake of time, I'm gonna create this rule because I already know this information. But think about this. If we, if we had a break glass user or a break glass role that that user had, we could say you can use that if you're coming from a particular server, using a particular program, uh, logged in as a particular operating system user. There's lots of things that we could do here. So this is a break glass kind of a mechanism. You can use this in combination with a privileged account manager. You can use this in combination with a jump server. So if you said, no, if you're gonna access this data, you need to make sure you're on the jump server or the trusted server or inside of some area that we, we deem acceptable for you to do these queries. So in my case, I've deemed that if you're using SQL Plus from this machine as this user, that's gonna be our trusted application path, our trusted access path, okay? So I'm gonna do what we already did and I'm gonna create a rule for this. So instead of the application server, I'm gonna create a rule here and I'll call him a local access with SQL Plus only. And then that criteria that we saw, in the screen and I'll show you again. Our OS user, SQL Plus, our client program name is like SQL Plus, our host is like our particular database name. So if we come into here, we can see, yep, our OS user, our host name, and then our program name. And you know, don't I got a little confused earlier 
a program name in VDollar session is the same thing as client program name in syscontext. So the naming on it's a little different, but they're exactly the same. Just be careful when you're working between module and program. As you can see here, module and program for JDBC thin client, module and program for SQL developer are the same, but when you get into SQL plus or some other tools, eh, those programs and modules names might be a little different. All right, and let's go ahead and hit okay. Now again, remember when we create a rule, we have to create a corresponding kind of rule set here and add that rule to it. And we'll just call him local access. And we are going to add our rule to this guy. And again, since he only has one rule in it, we're just gonna say all true. We could say any true, but all true is fine. We're gonna add an existing rule, not application server this time. We're gonna choose local access with SQL plus only. And again, it's got all that information in here. We're gonna choose our, our fail code again in here. And uh, these can be the same, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna make him say local access only. And then done, again, our, all of our SQL is down here below. We can see all this information. We're gonna click finish. Again, remember, nothing is in place yet. We've just created the pieces in order for us to control access. So I can still query the data here from the employee search table. I can still query the data here from users. So I can still see this information, whether it's in uh, SQL Developer or SQL Plus. So I can see this information. Now what I'm gonna do is go back to my realm, modify my realm, edit my realm again, we're protecting the employee search prod, all objects, all object names, all object types. We are allowing employee search prod to access his own data only if he can meet the criteria defined in our rule set. Our employee search app role can access the data anywhere right now. We're gonna edit this and we're gonna change this to be our local access. So we're gonna lock this guy down further, lock this role access down further, Go next, again, we can see the changes that we made to it. We deleted this, and then we basically re-added it with our rule set name in place here. And we're gonna click Finish. Again, it's critical that our application functions. We don't wanna mess with our application. We wanna make sure that it works just as well today as it did before we implemented Database Vault. And what we wanna see now is that we are getting an error in SQL Developer because it is not a part of the rule set that we created or any of the rules that we, were, we had in our rule set. Local access only. This session here is this one or this one. It is the sessions from my laptop. It is not the session from the DBSEC lab server running SQL plus as Oracle. So it's blocked. Same thing here, right? This is still blocked by the application, application trusted path rules that say you can't use that this way. Sys is blocked because he is not, the Sys user and the system user are not realm authorized participants or owners. They're not in the realm. They're not in our mandatory realm, therefore they are blocked. But if we come here to our SQL developer, our SQL plus, we can access this data, right? We can query this data because this is the session that meets the criteria. Let me uh, just run a couple queries here to show you what this looks like. So if I run this query as employee search, here, let me uh, scroll it up a little bit. Data works. If I run the same query here as employee search, the owner of the data, nope, cannot access this data because app account usage is disallowed. Okay, what if I do the same thing when I run it as a um, as system from here? Let me, let me do the same thing, as system, right? Insufficient privileges, right? Because we have 
that realm in place to protect it. And so we do not have system as an authorized participant. Okay, so, so this, is, this is what we wanted to show you today here. And we're gonna leave a few minutes here for Q and A. We prevented privileged account users from querying the application data in any tool, right? We limited how the application user can be used by anything other than the application with that trusted application path. We allowed kind of a break glass method to access the data by having a role and then by that user having those capabilities or those privileges. And then we limited where and how that role can be used, right? We said no, that role shouldn't be used anywhere, it should only be used from our allow list. Our trusted host, our trusted user, our trusted connection tool, right? So we did all this today here, very, very powerful stuff. All right, we did the demonstration and walkthrough, and we are uh, probably gonna talk about Oracle Label Security next month, and that's another product that's uh, in Alan's wheelhouse. This way I get Alan up at uh, like 1 a.m. two months in a row here, but uh, the next Ask Tom office hours will be Thursday, the 9th of April, and our topic tentatively is gonna be Oracle Label Security, getting started, maybe some some GDPR things here. We're still kind of uh, working out the topic, but it, it'll probably be around Oracle label security. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the, uh, the session for questions. Um, what have we got here in the forums? So it looks like uh, Alan uh, already answered this. So Vladimir asked, are there any existing tutorials or hands-on lab for this database vault use cases? Where can I find it? Thanks. And Alan says there are similar tutorials in the database vault admin guide. Uh, the admin guide has tutorials for most features here. And uh, you know, you're welcome to email me um, if you want. And uh, I can, you can email my boss. Hey, I like that. His email's on here today, not mine. And I can send you these examples. Um, they're pretty straightforward. Uh, this video will be available in a couple days, so you can watch the video and kind of copy what I'm doing. And you can use just the HR schema. You can use whatever schema you have. Mine is just an example schema. So, yeah, good question. All right, and then uh, Grish asks, is it best practice to use the upper for modules or use syscontext for this? Oh, Alan, this is like your favorite question here, buddy. Um, yeah, that's... Uh I, I highly recommend using the uh, uh, rules, the sys context information and rules. Uh, that's much easier. Uh, we take care of a lot of some things for you for that instead of using the factors. Yeah, and I agree, uh, Gresh. I would say exactly what um, Alan said is, you know, I, I'm used to using just sys context. And I think sys context, there's more capabilities there than we have with the factors. I would probably use this context because anyone can read it. It's easier to see. So if I restrict, so, and then, uh, uh, Gresh, when you, when you uh, put these questions in the chat, then no one else can see them. If you put them in the Q and A, then everybody else can see them. So I'll read it here. If I restrict sys, even Oracle maintained scheduler jobs get restricted from execution. Yeah. So database vault, is not meant to restrict sys in a lot of the ways that you may want, okay? So what we can do is we can control access there, but think of sys like root in Linux, right? It's like if you're saying, hey, I wanna, I wanna control what root can do on the operating system, it's like, well, wait, root is root, right? And sys is sys. The best thing to do with sys is you can control, you can kind of separate here access to the data, um, but there are some other side effects that could happen there. Um, you can use ops control to separate in Oracle database 19C, you know, container admins from pluggable database admins. Uh, but the best thing to do is to get away from using sys, use a privileged account manager, check out credentials when you need, log into the operating system as yourself, and you can even use Oracle SQL clients to connect to the database, so you're connecting as a named user. Sys should be something that you're using 
for patching, for upgrades, for installations, but you should minimize the use of sys as much as possible. I know it's, it's, it's something new, but it's, uh, it's, um, I mean, it's something we've always done, but let's try to minimize sys. Alan, did I cover all your talking points there? Yes, yeah, sorry, I was answering a different question, but it sounded like it. Yeah. Yes, uh, it's, it's critical um, for uh, the, the sys and sys TVA privileges protected the same as your root account. Uh, in the OS is is uh, protected. If you um, if you protect your root with the village account management system, we recommend the same thing for the Oracle account as well as uh, the Sys uh, database account. Yeah. Hey, Alan. Uh, Goresh has an interesting comment here in the chat again. Um, if I I got input from support that we can't use module slash session in DV. And then there's a quote where basically, as explained in the doc, module name is set when session calls DBMS applications at module. Module name doesn't exist prior to establishing the connection, therefore you can't filter um, when it tries log on action. Okay, so I think that's the key right there is log on action that you're using. So if that's not set there, then you can't use it. But if your rule set is dynamic, not static like I created on these, then you can do things using a module because it'll re it'll look at that sys context for that module every time. Now you'll add a little bit of overhead there because it has to look at the context and requery it and make make sure it's set to whatever it's supposed to be set to. But uh, yeah, Alan, do you know why they would say we can't use module session in DV? Uh, I saw something about this come up, and it was a uh, and the it was more of a difference in what the context uh, had the information, and and uh, it, this is one of the reasons I like using simulation mode to capture uh, the actual factors. Yeah. Um, and you take a look at all the factors. You may say, okay, well, maybe I can't use this one, but I can use IP or I can use something right. else. Uh, so. Um, it, it, by just typing the sys context and trying to uh, figure out what that is as you're running things, that may not be the exact same things that database fault sees like on a login context. So run it under simulation mode, uh, take a look at all the factors and see if that, uh, because if, if it's captured in simulation mode, you can use that uh, uh, it's, it's rules like just like uh, Rich just did here. Yeah, yeah. So I'll show that to you again here and I'll just take out the exact... I'll just do a wild card here, but so you can see what the realm violations were, what realm was violated, and then you can see, you know, what type of realm, object owners, you can see some pretty good information. You can see the exact SQL query that we executed when this happened. You can see the difference between mine on uh, the SQL developer or SQL plus versus what the application runs. So you can see that. And then if we scroll, 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 we can see the IP address, the host name, the, uh, the database IP address, how it's uh, the identity, the enterprise identity here, identification type. So you can see some information here. And this is what Alan's referring to. Atsuki, I'm not sure I understand your question, um, your your comment today. Your So it, you say, uh, you're curious about the feature today. It looks possible, um, but it might be a tough job. So if we're talking about database fault, you know, it, it can be, right? Because it is separation of duty. It is, you know, compartmentalized, compartmentalization of roles, responsibilities, and even data. Alan and I, we always advocate for starting small, doing a simple use case, maybe just protecting one table, and then using that simulation mode that Alan referred to in the last question. It's just make sure that you're stepping through this slowly and you are identifying what your goals are with Database Vault because there's lots of different things you can do at any given time, but you, you want to make sure that you've identified our goal is to protect application credentials from being used anywhere else. Okay, that's our goal, and here are the things we want to do to get to that goal. 
Well, let's go ahead and open it up for questions here for our second session. So if you have questions in the chat, uh, feel free to ask them. If you want to ask them uh, over the phone, you can just raise your hand and um, we'll unmute you. Alan, go ahead. Hey, uh, yeah, uh, Jim uh, has a question about uh, ABDF upgrade. I don't know if you can uh, take that. I've asked, uh, I've been the ABDF product manager, but uh, he hasn't responded yet. Ah, you know, Jim, I don't know. So the question is, ABDF 12.2, must you be on bundle patch 12 to upgrade to 20? I don't know if that's been determined yet or not, Jim. Um, but uh, shoot Russ an email or... Um, I think Russ, I think I probably have your email too. We can find out for you and see what that is. Good question. And then Eduardo asks, are there any special requirements to use AutoVault on autonomous database? For autonomous database, we would probably recommend you use Oracle DataSafe instead. If you're familiar with Oracle DataSafe, it's in your tenancy. You can monitor that. Um, yep, that's what Alan just said. A better utility would be able to use Oracle DataSafe. So with Oracle DataSafe, you can quickly register those autonomous databases and monitor them with Oracle DataSafe. Uh, instead of having to set up your own yeah. virtual or bare metal server is ABDF and yeah. all the agents and get all that work, especially for autonomous, we have a button that lets you register the uh, uh, data, uh, enable data safe yeah. from the autonomous window. And then uh, it's free. The audit side, uh, the collector's uh, set up, you can help you manage policies from the audit, uh, from the data safe side as well. So, um, and it's again, free up to, about, I think it's 1 million records per month per target. Yeah, no. All right, we've got uh, about three or four minutes left here. Um, Hopefully you can see the, the functionality of database fault. Um, the ability to separate application data from privileged account user to protect those application credentials, to protect roles. There's lots of things I didn't show you. You might have more questions on, you know, feel free to ask the questions here. Uh, send, send us an email. If you'd like to ask us privately here, this is my boss's email, Russ Lowenthal on here. And uh, we'll see you next month on the next Ask Tom Database Security Office Hours.